we were talking about success principles and I was saying you, you got to get the winning attitude you've got to set a goal then you have to work on self-image now when we think we build images in our mind Dr. Uh, Maxwell Maltz discovered the self-image concept as we know it today in, 19, in 1960 he was a plastic surgeon and uh, he realized he, he was operating on people he may remove a, a you know a nasty scar from their face and he noticed sometimes when he removed the scar or maybe did a nose job on them or something there was a great psychological change took place in the person they may, where they may have been introverted they started to become very gregarious and outgoing and he postulated that there must be two images that we have an exterior image and we also have an inner self image mm -hmm. and he started to study this and he wrote a magnificent book on it called psycho cybernetics mm -hmm. and psycho cybernetics psycho being the mind cybernetics being the science of control and communication and he goes into this and he explains how every one of us has an image in our mind of ourself and it's called a self image too many people don't know much about themselves and so they don't have a very good image of themselves and you'll often notice that people will shy away from you they won't look you in the eye they'll look down or look up they'll never try to do anything of any great consequence because they don't think they can they have a poor self-image okay part of that is because through school we're told about what well, we don't do well we failed here we had low grades or that we could only be part got 60 percent yeah. or whatever okay. yeah i think that um, I think there's been a great disservice done with the IQ test in that respect when you're bringing out school. Uh, Benet, the Frenchman back around the turn of the century, invented the IQ test, and then we brought it over from Stanford over here, and we'll test a person's intellect, and then we'll brand them good, bad, smart, not, and uh, that's not true. We can change IQs by changing self-images. Mm -hmm. But yes, if we're told we're not very good, you're just like your dad, you know, you're a bum, you're never going to do well, you didn't go to school, you can't win. Okay. Well, that's all, tr that's, that's all false. We can do anything, and we should be encouraging a child. Give them a pat on the back rather than a kick. Okay, what can we do? Members of uh, our, our, our viewing audience right now, they, most of us walk around with some degree of a self-image, is that fair to say? We all have a self-image. Okay, would you say most of us have a, have a negative self-image to some degree? Well... Let's say we can all improve our self-image. Okay. I don't care how good your image is, you can improve it. Okay, how can we improve it? Something specific. How can we go about making our self-image more positive? <laughs> well, again, you know, you're getting into a whole day seminar. If I could give you just a simple tip on it, if a person would sit down and let their body relax, totally relax, okay. and then start to visualize in their mind, see themselves the way they want to see themselves, which may take a, a good deal of thought since yeah, we're not well, sure. you relax. Yeah, and I, I mean, in terms of how we want to see ourselves, maybe we don't we don't know where we how we want relate to relate it to something specific. Uh, uh, somebody we admire, maybe or, possibly uh, somewhere we like to see ourselves down the road. Okay. Yeah, see how you'd like to live your life. See yourself living it that way. Okay. Now understand that that's a picture in your mind. When you pick up a book, the book is nothing but a picture that an author has painted in words. Van Gogh, the great artist, was asked one time how he did such beautiful work. He said, I dream my painting, and then I paint my dream. They get the picture on the mind, hmm. and then paint it on the wall, or on the canvas. Well, if we would relax and build the image in our mind of how we'd like to see ourselves, mm -hmm. how we'd like to see ourselves acting in life, relating to other people, our social life, see ourselves in the position we hold, or how we make our sales presentations if we happen to be in selling or something mm -hmm. and then take that picture and describe it write it out in the present tense i am so happy now that i see myself and write it out now a lot of people will laugh at this and say that doesn't make any sense it makes a lot of sense they can't tell you why it doesn't i could spend hours telling you why it does and i could explain it in such detail that everyone would understand it but write out a description of how you'd like to see yourself. Start to read it, and read it, and read it, and read it every day. Carry it around and keep reading it. The one point that all the great teachers, all down through history, have all agreed on, they've been in complete unanimous agreement on it, we become what we think about. Now it may be fantasy at first, it might even appear to us as being a lie. Mm -hmm. But if you read it often enough, you'll start to believe it. And when William James said, believe in your belief will create the fact, you will see the person's personality change. I watch people in the seminars, personality change right in front of my eyes.
And all they're doing is starting to see themselves different. They're starting to think different thoughts. If you want another amazing clip of a young Bob Proctor, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. You mentioned in terms of success principles, attitude, this business of attitude. Attitude, attitude. It takes in the way you think, the way you feel, and the way you act. I'd have a difficult time really uh, explaining attitude right just in a conversation.